Welcome back. Well, today clearly is the day of public sector entities. We already flagged off the insurance companies, the likes of LIC, National In India Insurance, GIC, etc. But take a look at BHL as well. That stock is higher by 8%. You can also bring into account uh, Hindustan Aeronautics, which is flying away in the trading session, 4% higher. SJVN is the other one, which too is doing quite okay. And then Bharat Dynamics too. And there was a note that came from Antique as well, talking about how the management is guiding for a stronger second half of the year. So all of these defense, insurance, and even other industrial names doing well from the public sector space. But let's welcome on board uh, the next management on the show. We have with us Mr. Anurag Mantri joining in. He's of course uh, from Jindal Stainless Limited joining us to talk to us about how the company is doing and what's the latest. He's the Executive Director and Group CFO at Jindal Stainless Limited. Um, hi Mr. Mantri, good to have you on the show. I just wanted to begin by discussing the latest development which is the release of the pledge. Uh, what led to that and overall uh, this overhang uh, going away from the company, what does it really mean? Yeah, sure. So I know, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you recall that uh, the share pledge uh, uh, have been going on since almost 2010 uh, and uh, this was a big overhang uh, on both of the investors as well as all our lenders. And uh, I'm happy that, uh, in fact, uh, lenders have agreed to release the entire uh, share, which is almost 78% of the uh, promoter's shares were pledged. And with our continuous performance and the kind of business model and operational performance we have delivered over past three years, and which has also seen in our rating, uh, which has been now double A, uh, which we can clearly see that uh, lenders have got a good confidence and they have uh, released the entire shares of, uh, of promoters. And uh, this will obviously sure give us a good fillip in the both in for the equity investor as well as on the lenders uh, side for the future capital. So uh, this is a good development, and uh, uh, this uh, this was a big overhang for most of the equity investor as well as for raising new debt capital for us. Point taken, but going forward, given your rating has improved as you talked about, what will it do to your cost of borrowing? And secondly, I think the net debt has been coming down. It's close to around that 2100 uh, rupee mark, 2100 crore uh, rupees mark. Uh, what's the roadmap for the leverage going forward? So, uh, if you see leverage wise, uh, we are one of the best in the metal industry despite being in the uh, capex cycle. So, if you recall, we have just doubled our capacity in three, uh, three, uh, three months back from uh, in a RISA plant from one uh, to almost reach to 2.2 million ton. So with the total capacity of 3 million ton now, despite all these capexes and we also acquired few of the assets in uh, Indonesia in terms of the nickel uh, backward integration of nickel as well as on the JUSL, which was the hottest strip mill. Uh, we acquired the RATI and despite all these uh, uh, organic and inorganic capex, uh, our debt equity is just 0.2. And uh, going forward, what we are expecting to maintain around these ratios, which are very healthy. And we don't see, uh, so this year we still have a capex of close to 3,300 crore between uh, uh, JSL and JUSL, which is our uh, another major subsidiary. And still, uh, we don't see a debt increasing by more than 200 crore. So largely, these capex will be uh, funded from internal approval. And uh, there would be only 200 crore increase from the March 23 level of debt. So overall, largely these capex will be funded in, uh, through internal approval. So we see a good uh, healthy, well, continue to maintain a very healthy ratio uh, both in terms of debt equity and debt EBITDA side and don't see any of the uh, pressure on the, uh, raising a large quantity of debt. Okay, right, Mr. Mantri, thank you so much for that. But, uh, you know, let's talk about the industry level, right? Higher in uh, Chinese imports into India at uh, subsidized rates continue to be a very big problem for the industry as well. Now, uh, one, how is the company maintaining its volume growth despite this increasing imports into India? And uh, are you hopeful that uh, the countervailing duty uh, being imposed on uh, stainless steel imports uh, soon, that is something that we could watch out for as well? So, um, uh, if you I say about the imports, I think if you see the import pattern, last quarter, if you see uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, imports have increased by 26%, and out of which 55% so were hijacked by Chinese uh, imports. So, we see a big uh, gap, uh, big uh, sign of unabated imports coming from China market, 
which are also not giving a level playing field the other th problem with these imports are these are generally the chinese productions are from the blast furnace based which are bringing high carbon emissions into the country so it's increasing the carbon emission load for the country these imports so one is that these imports are actually more creating pressure on msme uh, manufacturer because for us is still being a high end market we still have some of the export avenues as well as on the high end avenue but it continue to put pressure on our margin but for the smaller player it becomes uh, it's, they are almost cannot survive so if you see most of the msme manufacturer are right now in fact operating just less than 50% capacity right now which is a major deterrent for the make, may, entire make in india effort so we uh, hope that uh, these cvd measures and these uh, th should be taken uh, quickly because this will give us two advantage to the country one is that it will help to develop the msme uh, manufacturing ecosystem in line with make in india second it will also reduce the carbon emission load uh, from these uh, uh, lower end uh, chinese imports which are coming into the country so uh, i think hopefully the government should take cognizance of these and uh, overall it will be good for the overall indian manufacturing ecosystem as well as the carbon emission ecosystem also you know i just want to know in terms of more about the volume uh, guidance for fy24 as well as fy25 and uh, what is it that we can expect in terms of revenue as well as ebitda also for both these years as well so uh, for fy24 our guidance is around uh, 20% over fy23 number and then we were uh, now we are targeting another 20% uh, growth in fy25 over 24 so if i see this year uh, put together two years in fy24 and fy25 as compared to fy23 number we expect our volume to grow almost by 44% so which is a good uh, volume growth which we are targeting obviously uh, external factor will always be keep playing especially the two part one is that our export market which are the U largely the us and european market and uh, secondly also the uh, how the chinese imports continue to play into the india and the government measures to protect those uh, things but we are uh, hopeful to deliver at least 20% growth in another fy25 also so in fy25 we are so this year we are targeting close to uh, reaching of 2.15 million ton and the next year around 2.5 million ton so overall 44% growth in two years over fy23 numbers Okay, that's a very solid growth assumption that you're putting on board. But uh, Mr. Mantri, if I can uh, get more details from you, when you say the domestic demand is holding up, talk to me which segments are driving this uh, demand, and secondly, with respect to pricing, what's your expectation? Is there a northward bias? See, uh, uh, on the domestic side, uh, I think what we have done in our business model, we have made our business model as segment independent because uh, there are multiple uh, seg uh, earlier our uh, dependency or uh, on a strategically if you see the larger steel sector dependency is high on the infra segment but especially for stainless steel we have now made ourselves as a segment independent and we have uh, developed our product mix so now no segment is actually contributing more than 15 to 20% so it deviates our business model from a if the particular segment is not doing so for us now auto railway uh, infra consumer durable all put together are actually contributing this driving this growth so even if sometime uh, one segment say like auto is struggling with if uh, in between uh, was struggling with for the chip shortage but we still continue to grow our volume because that is the testimony of our business model we can actually switch to the other uh, segments which are actually doing well at that point of time uh, government's program of uh, gati shakti program has given a new good flip to the railway uh, volumes so which continue to drive our uh, volume so we have will see a demand pull coming from across the segment because stainless steel people are now realizing as a life cycle cost uh, basis and stainless steel uses are increasing across the segment and uh, so we continue to see across the segment growth i would not put that only one segment will be driving but i would say like uh, over and top of it the newer end segment like which is the primarily we call it a green and blue economy green is largely for the green, related to the green energy and blue is related to the water uh, related economy where the stainless steel use uh, uses are actually uh, increasing uh, considerably and say so like whether it's uh, in on energy side whether it's uh, uh, biofuel it's a cng lng cng all these actually are uh, have a large stainless steel uses similarly on the water treatment side uh, the stainless steel is the key raw material key material which to be used 
so we see both the newer areas as well as the existing area continue to drive the solid growth to the uh, the overall thing and we we are on the operating on the upper end of the product mix so which is good for the country because our largest market is if you see was actually the european union which are very high on the automation and uh, process industry and we want to replicate the similar sort of uh, uh, product uh, deliveries to our uh, indian uh, economies and therefore it's also again i am coming back to that critical to <laughs> Uh, that is for the chinese uh, lower and chinese import no i understand no i understand the importance of that but just anurag in the interest of time quickly wanted two things from you you gave us the volume guidance for the next couple of years but talk to me about the ebitda spreads as well and my question to on the pricing as well how do you see that moving forward the uh, ebitda guidance for us this year was 90 to 21000 uh which is there by i think uh, what we are seeing is that i think last uh, in h1 we delivered close to 20000 and since they right now we see a pressure on uh, both uh, us and european market but uh, still we are close, uh, seeing that we should be able to uh, deliver almost close to 20000 of ebitda guidance but we are maintaining our guidance let's see how the market unfolds but i see uh, moving towards 21000 at this stage looks uh, challenging but 19 to 20 will still be way within our range of 19 to 21 for this year uh, next year it's bit early uh, over our pricing side uh, in stainless steel it's a pass through model what we say and right now since the raw material prices are also lower so we are actually passing on that benefit to the consumer and uh, we uh, reduces our prices immediately to pass uh, give benefit to the domestic consumer so the prices uh, overall realization uh, remains uh, down but that's also a pass through model that will be able to maintain our ebitda numbers right mr mantri thank you so much for joining in with us this uh, afternoon on et now talking to us about uh, in terms of what we should be expecting in terms from the company in terms of volumes going forward as well thank you so much mr mantri uh, so yes maintaining their uh, ebitda guidance at rupees 19000 to 21000 per ton that's the word coming in from the management of uh, jindal stainless but uh, on that note we're going to step into a very short break don't go anywhere we'll be back with more after the break